I don't know if you've ever heard of the artist Robert Williams, but uh, he's a bit out there. Words you might use to describe his work, I don't know, maybe eye-popping, rebellious, provocative. His paintings, if you look at them, you'll see things like hot rods, pin-up girls, even some cartoonish violence. He's been at it now for eh, the better part of a half a century, and so I'd say that qualifies him for a major retrospective, and that's exactly what he's got in Los Angeles. Our L.A. Bureau Chief Stephen Cuevas checked it out and brings us this story. The artist himself will be the first to tell you. My artwork would not be appropriate if your pastor was coming to dinner. Say. In a Robert Williams painting, there might be blood, fiery car crashes, or half-naked women reclining seductively on giant platters of enchiladas. Now, there, there is gratuitous sex and violence in my work, and I defend that by saying now, artists should be responsible for the entire human pathos of life. A picture's got to have a lot of energy, you know. You could start a car off one of my paintings. Uh. Rev up! It was cars, hot rods to be exact, that drove Williams to California from his native New Mexico in 1963. I was attracted to Los Angeles for hot rods. The other thing was girls. I just, uh, I had to get to California. Williams quickly found work as an illustrator for Southern California hot rod magazines, but he chafed against the rigid demands of advertisers. But in the pages of the 60s counterculture underground comics, Williams flourished alongside like-minded artists like Robert Crumb. All the while, he toiled away on those paintings. And it was just looking hopeless. I couldn't get a gallery to show me. Finally, I got involved with punk rockers. Williams found a home in the after-hours gallery spaces at punk rock clubs, but mainstream success remained elusive until 1987. That's when a little-known L.A. rock band spotted a Williams painting called Appetite for Destruction. Welcome to the jungle. Guns N' Roses wanted to use the cover for its debut album. Now here's where you might want to turn the radio down if you have kids around. In the painting, a young woman sells toy robots on the street. Her kiosk is knocked over, so is she. A robot in a trench coat stands over her. She did have her panties down around her ankle, and she did have one breast exposed. Now, there's a monster jumping over the fence to avenge her. Say, I have not gone without avenging this graphic crime. Williams told Guns N' Roses, fine, use it, but don't say I didn't warn you. The group's 1987 debut album is still stirring up controversy. A feminist group branded it a glorification of rape. The band ultimately caved to the pressure and yanked the artwork, though singer Axl Rose defended Williams in an interview on MTV. And I think that since it was such an outrageous picture, the skill gets overlooked. A lot more people, I think, are turned on to Robert's artwork than were before, and I, I'm really glad to be a part of that. The notoriety cemented Williams' reputation as an outsider artist with an outsized influence on a new generation of artists, many of whom are now featured in Juxtapose, the magazine he co-founded 20 years ago. The whole thing is silicon and it has a core which is made out of fiberglass resin. That includes sculptor so like Kazu kind of Suji. He creates enormous, eerily lifelike um, silicon busts of famous from, people uh, like Salvador Dali and Abraham Lincoln. Suji says Juxtapose uh, helped carve out a place for left field artists uh, like himself. Many people told me that it's hard to make a living as an artist, but every time we do a show and uh, there was a magazine article, it just bring up more attention. Hundreds of people crowd into the cavernous L.A. Municipal Art Gallery for the opening of Slang Aesthetics, a survey of Williams' artwork from the past decade. The exhibit also includes dozens of other artists who owe at least some of their success to exposure they got thanks to Juxtapose and Williams. It, it's a feral art. It, it's an art that's raised itself in the woods. That's the most vital when it's struggling to get to the top. Williams sure seems at the top as he patiently greets a crush of fans on the exhibit floor, but after a couple hours, he says he's ready to head home. At age 72, these big, noisy art openings may not be as thrilling as they once were. The painting is. I have a compulsion. I have to do it. 
if you don't have to do it, then dump a pile of sand in the museum and write a treatise about it. You know? My greatest happiness is when that sucker's done and it's out of my life, and, and i got to get that next one going. Williams admits the brush moves a bit slower these days, but he says he's getting better at caging the images and urges that continue to fire his imagination. For the California Report, I'm Stephen Cuevas in Los Angeles.